In Abidjan, epidemiologist Dr. Kevin de Kock heads a $2 million a year AIDS research project funded by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, or CDC. He's convinced there's a mounting AIDS epidemic. The problem is actually it's under-measured. If you don't measure how changes in, uh, how patterns of mortality, for example, are changing, you won't know. Uh, we've looked at it in Abidjan, and uh, they've changed extraordinarily since the AIDS epidemic, uh, with a, a tremendous increase in death, in premature death. Um, this, is, it, this is an epidemic of, of historical importance. It is, it is, it's an epidemic that's going to last for decades. It may last more than a century. Prophecies of doom for Africa should perhaps be judged against similar predictions that have long been made of an AIDS catastrophe in the West, predictions we now know to be greatly inflated. The committee, appointed by the UK government in 1988, predicted UK AIDS figures for 92 that were over double what they turned out to be. In fact, the only scientist who has consistently predicted almost exactly the right figures for the UK is Professor Gordon Stewart. Because those predictions are so erroneous, and because the methods used by and large are the same, I find it very hard to understand uh, why they place such confidence in those estimates for Africa, even though the confidence limits are wide. I mean, at one extreme they're saying a very small number, the other extreme a very large number, and saying that it's not easy in between to decide uh, what's going to happen. But that makes it all the more important to uh, avoid making those statements about the statements of doom about whole populations being exterminated. I can't see at the moment that we have justification for seeing this. Dr. Harvey Bialy, who has lived and worked in Africa, is deeply skeptical of any current AIDS claims about the continent. Those claims are just that. They are based on uh, no real evidence whatsoever. Uh, in fact, the evidence uh, could not really exist because mortality figures for the continent of Africa have never been kept as uh, matters of record by the governments, even within hospitals. Uh, these figures are extraordinarily difficult to come by. The more research funding that's put into Africa, the greater the anomalies that emerge. Does HIV need triggers to turn into AIDS? Can you have AIDS without HIV? Can you live with HIV and not get AIDS? One group that is being closely observed is the prostitutes of Abidjan. Research shows a much higher incidence of HIV than in the rest of the population. Some of the women have been falling seriously ill and some have died. But prostitution often goes hand in hand with hard drugs. And Abidjan's recent tourist boom has helped finance an escalating drugs problem. As yet, there's no useful evidence as to whether the prostitutes are dying of HIV infection or drug addiction. Cote d'Ivoire's Committee for the Fight Against AIDS has just started a project amongst prostitutes. Does the African experience of AIDS help our understanding of AIDS in the West? One who thinks it does is molecular biologist Professor Peter Duisberg. He has argued for six years that HIV is not the cause of AIDS. In leading science journals, he develops his view that HIV is no more than a passenger or hitchhiker that's around like other bugs when people are at risk a bug that's dormant rather than fatal and he points to one anomaly in particular in Africa statistics that he believes supports his theory more than 2,000 documented cases of AIDS without HIV many of these cases came from Dr. Kevin de Kock studies in Abidjan's three main hospitals there over one-third of cases not qualifying as AIDS under the Bangui definition of symptoms were HIV positive and one-third of the cases which did qualify as AIDS were HIV negative. How does Dr. de Kock explain the cases in his study which have been diagnosed as AIDS cases but when tested have been found not to have HIV? If we're talking about AIDS, we should perhaps scrap that word and talk about HIV disease, all right? It's very clear what is HIV disease. Now, it is not surprising that the constellation of symptoms, signs, and indeed opportunistic infections occasionally, occasionally occur in people without HIV infection. There are thousands of documented cases from 
the third world, from Africa in, in, in particular, of clinically reportable AIDS in which HIV testing has been done and found to be negative. Well, I think it's uh, amongst the strongest arguments that HIV is uh, irrelevant to the development of AIDS in at least uh, some cases, if not all cases. Dr. de Kock maintains that those HIV negative cases may have looked like AIDS but they were simply similar conditions which were drawn into the net when collecting numbers of patients for research purposes, not for patient care. These 2,400 cases were called AIDS for all intents and purposes in all the literature, and yet you're saying they shouldn't have been called AIDS, but they were identical to, to AIDS. So are but they were HIV negative. Are you saying they 2,400 misdiagnoses? Are we talking about, so we're talking about the quality of surveillance data? The documented cases full-blown AIDS, which when tested, were HIV negative. Well, then they're not AIDS cases. They're not AIDS in the way we talk about HIV disease. But they were called AIDS in the documents. In, in, they were called clinical case definition bungy AIDS. Mm. Do you see? Of course I see. Um, any case definition, particularly one which is clinically based, is not going to be perfect. When one has clinically identical pictures, one with HIV antibodies, one without HIV antibodies, to call one AIDS and one not AIDS is patent absurdity. This is irrefutable proof that HIV is not necessary for the presence of AIDS, except by definition.